So yesterday on the podcast, as well as in a thread on Twitter, I asked the question, does this, the LG G8X ThinQ dual screen, compete with other foldables? Well, in those conversations, it turns out that a lot of people have a lot of ideas about what a foldable is, what foldable means, be thought of in the same way, used in a similar way to the $1,400 plus phones that are out there right now. So the list of foldable phones is growing in 2020. There's the Galaxy Z Flip that just came out from Samsung. And of course, the Motorola Razr is supposed to come out sometime. And then we had the Galaxy Fold and we had the Huawei Mate X that's only out in China. And then we also have uh, LG has another device like this one uh, in the LG V50 that has a screen that can open and close. There are pros and cons to both the G8 and other folding phones. Some of the pros and cons differentiate these phones from one another and others, you know, they share. So let's go over some of the cons first of this phone as I've used it here in the first few days. I don't know this phone inside and out. I haven't figured out all the uses for it and how to use all the features that it has. So this is just gonna be my take up to this point on the pros and cons, starting first with the cons. Now, one thing I was really looking forward to you would open up the Kindle app and it would open up into a book with using both screens, but that doesn't happen. And that kind of bumps me out. I'm a big reader. This would have been perfect or would be perfect if they bring that functionality for me. So that's one thing. You, you can also go full screen on a bunch of apps, you know, using both screens and the Chrome app does that. It's, I guess it does it better in landscape when you're going up and down as opposed to in portrait mode where you've got to split down the middle of the page, but it's not elegant. It's not a great solution. It's also a little bit heavier than most phones. And with the case on it, it, uh, it's about the size of a regular phone with an OtterBox commuter case on. It's not too big, it just is a little heavy. And that's taking some time to get used to in terms of holding it when it's open. Like, do I hold it here like I would hold a book or do I hold it back here just like I would with the, with the screen out here? Uh, if I didn't have a screen, I don't know. Usually holding a phone with a different form factor is, is more of a learning curve than a problem. So I'm gonna figure it out and figure out how to use it. One thing that I did have to do. This phone does have a fingerprint reader in the screen and the LG V50 has a fingerprint reader on the back. So this is the first time LG's used the under the screen fingerprint reader, but I found it to be almost impossible to use because this is not a touch surface. You have to open it and then you have to like do this and it's kind of, it's kind of annoying. Uh, that maybe is the most annoying thing, but I solved that by just turning off the security. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how that goes. Again, I've got a few weeks to use this. I'm gonna use it and then come back to a full review and maybe a longer term review to let you guys know what I think about this phone. Now, some of the pros that it has over other foldable screens include the fact that it's got great protection all around it when you have the dual screen going. Uh, it It's very well protected and the case feels really nice. It, they've got this leatherette feeling uh, back to it. It's it's plastic, of course, but it's a, it's got a good texture. It's got a good feel in the hand. It feels secure, so I like that. It doesn't really have any waterfall displays or anything like that, which I never really liked in the first place, and it just really is kind of understated and elegant as a phone, so I, I appreciate that about it, and that's not to say that the other folding phones aren't, aren't elegant in their own way, but this is just no muss, no fuss. It, it works like a book, and that, to me, is great. It is not gonna catastrophically fail when using it as it's intended to be used. I can open and close this thing and I don't have to worry about that. That's something that the foldable screen phones have had a pretty significant amount of trouble with. I mean, the Galaxy Fold was an unmitigated disaster when it first was uh, being released last year. So many of them failed. They figured it out a few months later. They got it on the market. And now the Galaxy Z Flip has had a few occasions where the screen has cracked. And in talking to friends who have the Galaxy Z Flip, th there's not a great sense of confidence when using the phone. They kind of want to baby it. And I can understand that. It costs $1,400 and it, it, it might break. It has in fact, broken. Oh, and the most important difference between this phone and the foldable screen phones that everybody's talking about is this phone costs $700 with the additional screen. 
The other phones, as I said before, start at uh, 1400 and go up. Now, those prices will come down eventually. The technology will get better eventually. Are they a more elegant design than this? Yes, probably so. But still, the cons outweigh the pros for those phones for me right now. And I can get a similar kind of functionality with this phone and at a much lower price. If you're somebody who wants to buy a foldable phone in 2020, then this is the phone to get. This is the phone to get. Yes, it's not got a sexy foldable screen or anything like that, but it is $700. It works really well and, um, you know, it's not going to break. In the future, this kind of phone will seem ridiculous. I, I agree with that. I understand that. But as of right now, this is the kind of foldable phone that actually works. While Folding phones are going to be something entirely different. And in fact, I think that foldable screen technology is not going to end up in a, in a form factor like a slab or something like that. I think that folding screens are going to end up being some kind of entirely different form factor when all is said and done. And they will have shifted the paradigm of the smartphone entirely. But right now, it's not there. As I said, I'm still in the review period, so these are just really first impressions after a few days, but I do know one thing. This is a foldable. It isn't a folding screen foldable, but it in fact opens and closes and, and fold, you know, there's a hinge there and hinges fold. And it's one that I think a lot of people would really enjoy. A lot of people who think that the foldable craze is not for them because of the prices. This is something that people could get into for a very reasonable price and it's a really good phone with a really good screen attached right now the people who can afford or at least can dredge up the money to buy a foldable screen folding phone uh they are not gonna they, they clearly don't care for this they don't want it to be mentioned in the same breadth as their flex phones and by flex i mean flex you know what i mean Anyway, they don't want it to be in the same category or even considered in the same category, but my question coming into this was, does this G8X dual screen compete with the other foldable phones that are out there? And my answer is yes, in part because of things like its durability and its price, and you actually get more screen real estate with this than you do with the other foldables. This is definitely something that you could try out if you want to be like all the cool kids and have a folding phone, but you don't have to mortgage your house or sell your car in order to get it. Now, foldables will be much different in the future, and I look forward to that day, but right now, I can't recommend anybody buy one of those over something like this, because this is at least gonna last long enough for the better versions of the foldable screen foldables to come. I'm just getting my feet wet with this thing. I'm not stepping on it. I'm just kind of using it and and figuring out how to use it. It is a different thing entirely to use a phone with two, with two screens, just like it would be with a folding phone screen. So it's gonna take a little time to get used to it. So if you wanna see my full review, if you wanna see uh, other videos that I do about this and other smartphones and as well as other tech, then you can subscribe down below, hit the bell notification so you know when new videos are coming out. If you've been here before, thank you ever so much for coming back again. I hope you'll consider becoming a channel member and getting some of the benefits that come with channel membership. You can check that out down below as well. At any rate, thank you so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. My name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is Painfully Honest Tech. Texts that want us, it hurts. Until the next time, I'm out.